Hey friends, it is that time again. It's time for another moment with Miranda. Welcome, welcome into the Father's house. Welcome into the Father's love. Welcome into the Father's presence. Welcome to this time to just step aside and to get to be with the Father, to be with one another, to hear what the Spirit would say to the church. Welcome to this moment with Miranda. This is a moment where you and I believe what God says about us. We believe his word. This is the moment where we speak it into the earth. This is the moment where you and I get to see the reality of it happen in our lives. And I am so excited and happy that you chose to join me for this moment with Miranda, where we believe it, we speak it, and we see it happen in our day. I'm really happy to share with you all for a few minutes today on the idea of, can you see me now? You know, I remember the beginning of last year and how everybody was bringing out um, what the Lord was speaking and what the themes for the year were going to be. And, you know, 2020, of course, many were proclaiming 2020 vision. We're going to see like we've never be seen before. We're going to be revealing what God wants to do. There's going to be great and mighty things and we're going to move in the purposes of God. And we were all excited and ready to go for this clarity like we'd never known before. And then all of a sudden, three weeks into the year, it's like lockdown. We physically weren't able to see people anymore. You know, the clarity was gone. And what we were seeing every day in the media was changing constantly. We didn't know where to focus at all. Where we had typically come together to focus and see God, you know, the church building was shut down. It was like all of this talk of perfect vision and what we thought we had keen insight on was suddenly gone. The places and the ideas that you and I placed our security in, whether it was our job, whether it was our normal every day, our typical church life, overnight seemed to change. You all know what the impact was on that in, for life in general, yours personally and corporate lives. And it truly forced us to begin to take into account what really mattered, um, what we were really focusing on. You know, many of us, the church in general, experienced such a stripping away of things that we thought were important, that we thought the church was, that we thought were necessary for us to like church you know, just stripping those things away so that we could actually see what was. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, as much as it seemed like we were seeing nothing and that there was nothing that was clear and nothing that we could focus on, this forced reset is what I'll call it, you know, caused a lot of us to truly begin to see God again. You know, it was not all the other stuff that really mattered, but when it came down to it, it was like Paul said, that I might know him. To simply know him, to know who he is, and not just to know him, but to know what he's doing now and what he wants to do, what it is that he has for you and I in these days ahead. And as I've thought about this 2020 perfect vision, you know, I found out this amazing thing that 2020 vision is not actually perfect vision. It's actually considered normal vision. And normal 2020 vision indicates clarity of vision at a distance, but it doesn't necessarily indicate a quality of vision. And I thought this was really interesting because you can have 2020 vision, but you can still have a poor quality of sight. So for example, you can have 2020 vision, but you can still be colorblind. You can have 2020 vision, but your depth perception can be off. Or your hand-eye coordination could be askew a little bit. Even your peripheral vision can be lacking. So even though we can have 20-20 vision at a distance, we may still only be seeing in part. 
we might still need some lenses in order to perfect that vision, to bring it into a sharper focus, to see the details, to not just see that something is different from afar, but actually to become keenly aware so that now we do the task that's in front of our hands, the task at hand with accuracy and also with precision. It's to see and to know not only the what, but also the do. And friends, I believe that as the body of Christ, that this last year was really a time for vision to come back into normal of what God actually intends for vision to be. Vision for the kingdom of God. Remember, remember, remember that you and I are kingdom people. That the kingdom of God is our normal. That we live kingdom focused. That the unity that you and I can experience as believers, we unite under the banner of the kingdom. We unite under the principles of the kingdom, the standards of the kingdom of God that he has declared through his word from the very beginning. Yes, our individual nations and our people groups matter. They're so important to God. I'm thankful that I was born an American. I was born into this American culture. I'm sure wherever you are, you can be thankful for the culture and the land that God has given you. And they matter individually to God. But what matters most is his kingdom. It's his kingdom come. It's his will be done on earth as it it is in heaven. What matters most is pursuing his kingdom, displaying his kingdom now into the world. And when the apostles and the men that wrote the books of the New Testament, when they were writing to these churches, they would begin to the church of God at Corinth to the church at Galatia, to the saints at Ephesus, to the saints of Philippi, to the church and the saints in Colossae, to the church of the Thessalonians, to the strangers scattered throughout the world. You see, friends, the church was this word ecclesia. And ecclesia means those who have been called out by name to assemble together, to gather into a company. And the saints were the hagios, the most holy people of God. And the strangers were actually this word that means pilgrims, those who were just passing through. And every time that these letters were were written by the apostles, by these men of God, there was a call to sharper focus through the words that were used. They were intentional in how they began the epistles. And as much as the individual country or the individual city was important, before the purpose of that letter was laid out, before what it was that they wanted to deal with, before the task that was in front of that specific people group was going to be unfolded and laid out, there was this declaration, hear me, there was this declaration of unity through identity for every one of those churches in every one of those places. It was like they were saying, you are not just Ephesians, you are the church at Ephesus. You are are the called out of the Ephesians. You are one nation under God. You are not just Philippians. You are the saints at Philippi, the holy people of God. You are most holy, called out by name, not just scattered haphazardly abroad, but you are the pilgrims sent into every nation and every tribe. No matter the individual task or the condition that was to be written about about in those times and for those specific people groups. Before there was purpose, there was one identity. I think this is so cool because I believe that you and I have been in and are in a time when the corporate identity of the body of Christ is being established with more clarity and with more purpose. We've seen that there is something stirring. I don't know if you don't feel like you haven't seen anything I have to wonder, like, 
I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for your eyes to be open because if you wanted to see this year, you saw something going on. There was a stirring that was happen, happening. And we've been called into this identity that we are not simply a church of individual buildings. We are a church of believers, a body made up of individuals. We're not simply a group of individual holier than thou saints. Um, some of us more holy than others or doing more or working our more we are a nation of holy believers a holy nation set apart to god we're not just pilgrims waiting to pass on to glory but we're actually called with purpose and intention for this time that you and i live in we've been set apart to a clearer focus it's been this reset a renewed mind a renewed sight renewed ears to hear to to see afresh the identity as the ecclesia the called out out ones of God and now we've been awakened to the kingdom purpose we're now awakened to the purpose that God has for this time for you and I I believe that there's a letter to the church that is being read for any of those who would hear it for any of those who would read it for any of those who would see it because now we've experienced this unity of identity and now God is calling us to a unity of purpose in this time see the church was never met and designed to sit outside of the world I've, I've said this before and I've heard this before it's not my original thought that the church was never intended to be peripheral to the world we were not meant to sit on the sidelines to the world but rather the church was to be the central focus the kingdom of God and the world would sit on the outside of the church that the unity of the body would bring perspective to the world that our kingdom was one to where the world would become subject to the rule of the kingdom of God and this is the time for more than just us seeing that God is doing something new but now it's about us being positioned and empowered to actually do the something new to be a part of what it is that God is wanting to do in our time it's not just clarity of vision anymore now it's quality it's not just normal kingdom vision now it's purposeful kingdom vision it's not just doing a task but it's doing it with insight and with precision as you Jesus would clarity and quality and focus and in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says this he says behold I send you as sheep into the midst of wolves be as wise as serpents and be as harmless as doves we know that the Jews wanted a military messiah they were not expecting what they got. They were in the midst of social upheaval. Their religious rights were threatened. They were under the rule of this foreign government. They wanted how things were their normal. They wanted their rights. They wanted their freedom. After all, they were God's chosen people, and this was how they expected things to be. They wanted a king who would get them back their kingdom, how they wanted it. And what they got was a kingdom that was anything like what they expected. You know, they wanted the tables turned on this foreign rule that was over them. But when Jesus came, he came and turned the tables on their form of religion, their form of godliness. You know, they wanted the right to remain as they always were. And what they got were the rights to this kingdom that said, your right is to be radically transformed by the indoing power of the Holy Spirit. That now your right would be to deny your personal preference and to actually embrace embrace the kingdom preference this is the kingdom that jesus brought not one of personal preference but one of god's particular purpose for the time and jesus said i am sending you out i just talked about this in a previous moment that it's this word apostello and it means to be separated and prepared for a specific task and that task has not changed from then till now. What was that task? That task was the work of the kingdom 
He said, I'm sending you forth to declare the kingdom of God is at hand. He is sending us forth to declare that the kingdom of God is at hand, that there is a king that is coming again back to the earth. He's sending us out to go forth healing the sick. It's still God's desire to heal people. I believe we are going to see miracles in the days that are ahead. He said, cleanse the leper. Who is the leper in our day but those who who are social outcasts, those who are religious outcasts, those who the church has looked down and discussed and said, gross, I don't even want to go there. I declare to you tonight that the church is being sent forth to the social leper, to the ones that the church thinks your rot is putrid. They are being sent forth in the spirit and the love of God to cleanse those lepers, to say there is hope for you, that there is purity for you, that there is a God who loves you where you are, but he loves you enough to call you up out of it. He is sending us out to cast out devils, that to preach deliverance. Anything that oppresses a person, anything that hinders them from the movement of divine purpose needs to be cast out in Jesus' name. He is doing that for you and I today, but I want us to notice this. Notice how he was sending his disciples out. It says that he was sending them out like, sh like sheep, like sheep into the midst of wolves. And they were called to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Now, if I was sending a group of people into the world to be these world changers, to be this dynamic group in the land, I don't think that I would call them as lambs. I wouldn't be like, here you are, go forth, little lambs. I'd be sending them as these ravening wolves, like, let's go to work and let's get something done. But Jesus did not say that he was sending forth soldiers armed with swords and these balls of fire in their hand that they could toss to the earth and incinerate everything there and exact the judgment of God upon the land. That's not how he sent them forth. Remember what he told Peter. Peter was zealous. And when they came to take Jesus in the garden, Peter wielded his sword and he whacked the ear off the servant of the high priest. Jesus said, put it away. And he healed the high priest. Remember what Jesus did. He rebuked James and John for the spirit that they were acting in when they said, shall we call forth fire like Elijah did on those who rejected you, Jesus? Jesus said, no. Why? Because that wasn't his heart. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He didn't come for the whole. He came for those who were sick. He didn't come for those who say we see. He came for those who were blind and he didn't know it. He came, he came for those who were deaf, that they couldn't hear, that they were ready for their ears to be open. And it's still the case today that he's still calling forth to whosoever will. And he was sending forth his disciples just like he came as a lamb in sacrificial love. In the book of Hebrews, we read that he was made like us in every way, yet without sin. And he took upon our sin so that we could take upon his righteousness. He became like us so that we could become like him. Because what the world needs is not a group of people that are so stuck in our religious form that we can't go out after them in the love and the purpose of the kingdom. What he wants is a group of people that have been radically transformed by the power of his love so that we can go out in that same love, clothed in the righteousness that is our gift, and to say you too can be made and you can be right. And Jesus knew the task that he was sending his disciples out to do. He knows Friends, he knows the task that he is sending you and I forth to do. He knew what the followers of his kingdom would face, that they would be hated, that they would be persecuted, that they would be beaten, that they would be tortured. He knew that they would be misunderstood and that they would be betrayed by those that, that they loved, but still he sent them. Still, he sent them out. And what I love about this verse is that it says that he didn't just send them out as lambs. 
but we're told that he sent them out as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. See, we're not sent aimlessly as sheep to the slaughter to be totally totally destroyed, but rather we're sent forth purposefully. And the armor that we're armed with is wisdom and we're sent forth with peace. See, when we think about a snake or a serpent, typically we think about something bad. I think about the serpent that was in the garden and how he beguiled and he deceived Eve. But there's something about some characteristics of snakes that are pretty amazing. You know, snakes are clever. They are highly adaptable to their surroundings. And I want us to hear this because I believe that we're coming into a time when you and I as the church will need to be highly adaptable to the environments in which we find ourselves in. Friends, I believe this. I believe this by the Spirit of God, even as I'm speaking, that we're going to be going forth into environments where we need to go forth into the wisdom and the discernment of God, being highly adaptable to those environments, just like a snake. Whenever it goes to take new territory, it has the ability to camouflage itself. And it camouflages itself and it lays low in the land until it actually gets a lay of the land in which it's just found itself in. This is so good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, sometimes snakes can see well in the dark, but it's not because their eyesight is so good, but because they can sense the heat. They have like this ability to have in infrared, where they can sense the heat created by a predator. They also can be sensitive to attacks through vibrations that are in the ground. And some of them, when they're threatened, can actually see better. But friends, I want us to get this, that a snake and a serpent is highly adaptable to the situation in which it, which it finds itself in. And you and I, as the body, are coming into a time of discernment where we need to be highly adaptable to where we are and how God wants to move to perceive what we've not perceived in a place where maybe we've not been or where we've been before to discern the land before we take it to not go in there guns blazing and fireballs in hand but rather actually to step forth as that lamb but as wise as a serpent in discernment to know what it is and how it is that God wants us to act in that moment. So as wise as serpents, but then it also says that we go forth as harmless as doves. The simplicity of a dove. They're pretty amazing. They're noisy. They're really, an, they're kind of annoying because they're so noisy, but they're innocent and they're unassuming. I mean, when was the last time that you heard of somebody being pecked to death by a dove? You know, that's just not something that typically happens. We don't see that. But doves are amazing because in their simplicity, they're able to be trained to respond to home. You know, you've heard of a homing pigeon. Well, doves are basically pigeons. It's just a, a, like a glorified name for, for a pigeon. But they can home. That means that they have this sense of belonging where they know where their home is and they're able to be to go out, but also to come back in to the place of safety. So we're sent out, but we're also called back in. They have this place of belonging. Doves were sent as carriers. They carried a message. They didn't carry their own message, but they carried the message of their master, the message that was entrusted to them so they could go forth with the message and then come back to receive another message. They were go going forth as ambassadors, so to speak. They were doves are considered peaceful. When we think of a dove, we think of peace just that beautiful presence and not just peace, but more than that, they're symbols of presence. And that's what I really want to emphasize here that, you know, that when Jesus came and he was baptized, that the father spoke of his pleasure. He said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus's baptism was not because he needed to repent, but rather it was because he was identifying with man.
And before he ever went forth into ministry, God identified his pleasure with him as a man. He said, you are my son, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. And then that pleasure actually was even more known in that the presence of the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove and rested upon him. The presence now rested upon him. The three agreed in one. The obedience of the son to become like man. The pleasure of the father to call him his own. And the residing presence of the spirit. Purpose, pleasure, and presence. And as believers, this is what you and I can expect. I want us to really begin to believe and expect this in our lives, that you are chosen, that you are called out. And as a believer, you and I have been born into the kingdom of God and we're baptized into Christ and we're adopted according to the Father's good pleasure as sons and daughters. And we are filled with the residing and remaining remaining presence of the Holy Spirit. So now when we go forth into the earth, we don't go forth on our own, but we go forth in the power of the union of the presence of God, the power of his purpose, the power of his pleasure, and the power of his presence. This is how we change things. This is how God gets his glory in this time. Friends, it's a time for clarity of vision and for quality of vision. I believe that this is how the Lord is leading forth his church, his army, his ecclesia in the days ahead. We are like lambs sent forth in the power of sacrificial love. We're like serpents trained to discern and to adapt to the land that we find ourselves in in any given moment. And we go forth harmless as doves, knowing our sense of belonging, knowing that the people of God and the presence of the Father rests and remains upon us. Oh, this is good. This is good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just like the disciples and every other person who has faithfully served their generation that has gone on before, the kingdom of God advancing in our day is not going to be a result of our personal power or our personal holiness or our ability to exert our personal will upon the earth. But the kingdom advancing in this day, I totally believe, will come from the power that we find in the presiding presence of God. That's how the kingdom advances. Because when you and I have been with him, when we have been identified with him, we will be like him. His pleasure will be upon us. The people who know his pleasure is on us. We know that his face is toward us and we live in the power of that ever abiding presence and face and countenance of God. And it's those people that will walk into the world as Jesus walked in the world, full of truth, full of grace and full of love. You can't help but produce the fruit of the tree that you and I are from. Whatever is born of God will produce the DNA of God, will produce the fruit of God, the character of God into the world. Friends, can't you see it in this moment? Can't you see it in this moment today that we have been given the eyes of normal 2020 vision, normal kingdom vision. This is what the kingdom looks like. This is who you are. Identity. You are kingdom people. The Ecclesia called out by name. Miranda, Marie, Howells called out by name. You put your name there to join the assembly of believers because now there is a letter being read that is the purpose of God for our day and for our hour. And now we walk in the quality of vision, the keen insight going forth as, as lambs in love going forth in the love of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, the presence of Christ, because we are a people made one in Christ. This is what we're called to. I hear the spirit of the Lord say to the church, can you see me now? Can you see me now? 
Do you not see the work that I'm doing in your day? Can you not perceive it? Will you not join the army? Will you not become one of the ones that have been called out for the purposes and the plans of God? Will you not draw back your shoulders as one who has been equipped not only with the power of God, but with the pleasure of God because the presence of God rests upon you? Will you not join as one of those people who no longer live in fear, bound to to a, a set of strict religiosity bound to the oppression of the enemy. I say no in Jesus name, but I declare by the spirit of God and by the word of power that you are free to walk forth in the pleasure and in the presence of God, because now is the time for you and I to walk forth, not only in the identity of the kingdom, but of the purpose of the kingdom for this day and in this hour. This is exciting. It's what you and I have been created for. It's what we're here for. It's what God's changed our lives for. Let's pray together tonight. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this moment with you. This moment with the master of the universe who is calling us, who has given us this time. Thank you for 2020, for the year of coming back to normal vision, where we see our identity as members of the kingdom of God, the church, the saints, the pilgrims, the called, the holy, the ones who go forth in the power of your name. Father, I ask that we would be like those disciples, that we would hear the call of the Spirit to now go forth, sent out, prepared and separated into the kingdom to do its purpose, Father, to walk in its power, to walk in the, its presence, Father. I thank you that you send us as lambs in your love, that you give us the wisdom as serpents to adapt, to discern, to know how to speak. And Father, I ask that you would make us those doves, that just as we have a gospel of peace, that we would speak peace because we're a people of peace that find our hope in our home and our belonging in the presence of God. Father, I ask that as my friends go forth in the power of this word and they begin to embrace it as their own God, that they would begin to see with clearer discernment that they would begin to walk in steps of peace and that there would be people who would say, I don't know what it is, but when you walk in the room, there is something different because they carry the presence of God. Let it be, Father, in our day, in Jesus name. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining me again for this moment with Miranda. This is the hour. This is the moment when we believe what God says. We believe what we're hearing the Spirit say, where we begin to speak it by faith, that we call it out into the atmosphere, and that we see the kingdom of God, the glory of the King of Kings, the name of God exalted in the earth in the days ahead. This is the moment where we believe it, where we speak it and we see it in Jesus name. Remember as always that God loves you so very much that you're the father's pleasure and I love you too. Make sure that you join me again next time for more Moment with Miranda. God bless you guys.